Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see each other this morning. We're a, a few short this morning, so we need to keep those that are not here for whatever reason, our prayers. And uh, some of them may be still mourning the Tennessee loss. I don't know. <laughs> but that's understandable. Um, do we have any announcements this morning we'd lift up? Bonner family, yes, uh, Randy's uh, cousin died who had cancer, and it was just a sudden thing, so please be in prayer for them. Anyone else? Announcements? Tracy Kimberly. Tracy Kimberly needs prayer. Tracy, did you get that? Kenna. No, she's cooked. She's cooked for Cooper. And our sister is still in the hospital and is not good. Okay. Uh, is she at Jackson Hospital? Uh -huh. What room is she in? 979. And what's her name? Peggy Spencer. Peggy Spencer. Okay. We'll certainly check on her. <coughs> okay. Look at your announcements. You see that... Uh, the stew sale is coming up for Browns Ruiton April 7th and uh, $2 a gallon, $6 a quart, is that right? No, it's $20 a gallon, right? <laughs> Carol's not here. I thought I'd get a, somebody to say something like that. And all that, and you see Carol, uh, I hope Carol's not sick or anything today. We miss her. No, the Ruitons are having their thing at Gatlinburg. Oh, okay, yeah. And let's see, Thursday the 29th, uh, Tom reminded us that we have our hourly prayer vigil sign up. It's in the back. And then sunrise service at 6.30, April 1st at Spring Creek Baptist Church. Tom, you're going to speak that day, I assume. That's what. And uh, look forward. To, I know they'll do, you'll do a great job. And uh, we've got some birthdays coming up. Tom Reed uh, has got one the 13th. Gene Lowry, 21st. And Gary Woolfork has one the 31st. So. Need to say happy birthday to all those. Uh, anyone else? If not, let us begin the worship today as we turn to number 397. We're glad to have our, our friend with us today to join us and play for us. And at number 397, those who are able to stand, please stand. <laughs> Oh. 
Stand, let us join together in proclaiming our faith, our Apostles' Creed, in the bulletin in front of you. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us now turn to number 298. And write in their hearts, and will be with their God, 
and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive them their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The word of God for the people of God. A lot of us would come down and see one more and often. Let us pray. God, it's good to be in your house, and we thank you again for this day and bless us with. And now, dear God, we ask that you bless the gift and the giver. May we be thankful for all that we receive and all we're able to give. In the name of Christ. several on our prayer list today we continue to add those and uh, is anyone on our list we need to take off or add another name this is not another one to add but Chase Stanford is still in the hospital at Vanderbilt and they with the shape that he's in they are not going to put him back on the transplant list okay certainly if anybody else well just so I only have to go through this once um, I have to have a complete dental this week you know, as soon as they confirm that there's no abscesses or drainages or anything from my teeth. Um, they will schedule open heart surgery and it will be the second week of April. Second week of April. Okay. We're certainly going to hold you in our prayers every day, Mickey. Anyone else? By God's grace, Todd is home and doing good, and he was just a trooper through it all. The doctor said, in cases like Todd, it has to be treated as pediatrics because he cannot tell you sure, yeah. where he hurts, how he hurts. But We're so glad he's back home. Um, he is, too. <laughs> Anyone else? If not, let us pray together. God, we lift up every person on this list today. We're thankful that we have an avenue to call upon you at every opportunity we have. God, you're so good to us. You're so good that you sent your son Jesus to be an advocate for us to petition our prayers to you and know, dear God, that you have uh, always our best interest in the middle of your will. And we know, dear God, that you're able to do great things. So we pray that, Lord, thy will be done and, Lord, that you're able to reach out and touch some people that, Lord, that really need a fine touch from you. God, we're not worthy of this uh, love that you give us, but we're so thankful. And may we return that love to you each day. Now we remember these. We lift up those in the nursing homes and the hospitals and those in special places. We ask, Lord, that you would touch them. 
Be with those who are not here today for whatever reason. Be, Lord, especially with Mickey, Lord, as she faces surgery. We know, dear God, that you have a hand upon her. And, Lord, we look forward to the, the healing that you'll give her through the surgery. Now, Lord, we pray now that you would remember us as we remember you each day. And help us, Lord, know that we are your children. And now as we pray, Lord, let us remember the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning I'll be reading from John uh, chapter 12, uh, verses 20 through 23. And uh, you have it on the back of your bulletin if you'd like to follow along. And let us hear God's word together. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. And the same came therefore to Philip, who was a Bethsaida of Galilee, the desired, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, bringeth forth much fruit. And he that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. And if any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. They came, then came their voice from heaven, saying, I have been both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, An angel spake to him. And, answered, and Jesus answered and said, The voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. If I be lifted from the earth, it will draw all men unto me. Then he said, signifying what death he should die. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As a kid, I've always been fascinated with the seeds. How you plant seeds. I'm not a kid anymore, but as a kid, when I was a kid. Some of you may have assumed I'm still a kid, and that's okay. Um, but when I plant a seed, I remember we'd plant our corn and things in the field. And, and uh, you know, always my dad had confidence they were going to come up because he knew if you plant the seed and you plant at certain times and all this, it, he said we should, should have a pretty good chance of having a good crop. And uh, I remember a time we planted corn by hand. That I remember we started planting it with a planter. And uh, all the, and we sowed it with a, a we had a sower we'd sow our wheat and uh, sow our hay and all that and it just always fascinated me the how that that seed would go in that ground and then after rain it would come up and so one day I decided I was going to investigate and so I pulled up didn't let Dad see me but I pulled up one of the corn seeds I wanted to see what was going on. So sure enough, that little seed that we had planted, put in the ground, it had some little stems coming from it and it had a shoot that come up and it had this green, and I said, wow, look at that. I said, the corn, you know, we, we have that, uh, I always said I have the curiosity of a cat sometimes. I gotta see what's going on, even though it may kill me, I still wanna see. And so I looked at it and I saw this is really neat. And then as we grow older and we hear the story about Jesus saying that something must die before it can live. I started understanding that. I started seeing what was going on. And it's amazing how God has all that planned out in his, in his creation. You must, the seed must die. The seed must go into the ground. And then out of that seed becomes life. And so Jesus was telling them that. He was trying to explain that to them. And he said, my time has come. My time has come when I, the world has been judged and I am uh, been convicted of your sins. And I have to go to the cross and I have to die 
for you. And because I die, you shall live. Now that's a whole other uh, understanding. You go from uh, talking about a seed to actually a physical body that Jesus would have to die. And out of his death would come the resurrection of the body and the resurrection for life for us. He says also that we are included in that plan. He said, if anyone serve me, let him follow me. And where I am there also shall that servant be. You see, Jesus took the first steps for us. He, he paved the path uh, for eternal life. And as we approach the time of, of Easter, we think about that is when the seed shall fall. Jesus shall die. And out of that seed of Jesus, the seed of, of God, there shall come forth life. And we celebrate the Easter. The seed that has been planted, the seed that has been lifted up, the shoot has come forth. And not only that, but it said, but we reminded that after the corn shoots up and it begins to grow, guess what comes from that? Fruit, right? And so we know that not only uh, it's not just a grave, it doesn't end with the grave, but beyond the grave, there is this abundance that God gives us. So he says to follow him. We follow him to the cross. We follow him as far as we can go. And we, like the disciples, cannot go to the cross like he did. And even some of us may be like Peter and say, I don't know that guy. But he goes anyway for us. And he placed himself upon the cross. And he even asked the question of his father. He said, he said I, you know, I, I really don't know. My body says, I don't want to do this. And he said, not my will, but thy will be done. And again, God reminds him that he is with him. With an audible voice, he says to them, he said, God glorified this. Jesus said, my soul is troubled. What shall I say? And Father, save me from this hour. Or as we hear some translations, take this cup from me. But Jesus is reminded in his spirit as he is uh, God incarnated. He says, not my will, but thy will be done. And so Jesus goes ahead with the plan. And he says those around him heard it sound, sound like thunder. Can you imagine God speaking in that, that audible tone? That It had to be like thunder. You can't imagine anything God does. It'd be uh, a minimal thing, right? It had to be something great. And so God speaks to him and he, he reminds him that he is his son and that he has to do this. And the people around him said it sounded like thunder and said maybe it was an angel spake to him and Jesus said this was done not for my sake but for yours. The example of the seed that had to fall, Jesus, the seed that had to be planted, Jesus in the tomb and the seed that had to shoot forth with new life, Jesus' resurrection. And so today, dying so we live dying so we live what a great gift what a great gift that he took our place on the cross what a great gift that he took our place in that judgment what a great gift that he said i will lay down my life for my people even those who do not love me or care for me i will die for them and then he said if i be lifted up from this earth i will draw all men unto me It seems like we've missed that part today, haven't we? We've missed that a lot in our society. We forgot to lift Jesus up. And we need to lift Jesus up to remind us that there is true life through Jesus. There's true life, true life through his dying. Years ago when I was just a, a kid again, I just barely can remember it, but you know, I can still remember some of it. When I was a kid, uh, my grandparents, uh, my grandmother loved flowers and she always planted uh, I call them buttercups. I know there's a scientific name, but I'm just, you know, I'm going to be a rebel and say they're buttercups. But uh, we used to have those buttercups all over, and you see them now on the hillside. I saw on the way yesterday uh, to a place, I saw a whole hillside just full of them. And I thought I, I would never get that mold because I love those things. I like seeing them grow. And so when I was just a kid, um, we were digging up some flowers from my grandmother's old place, and I told my mother I'd like to have one of those buttercups, and she said, what do you want that for? And I said, I'm going to plant it. She said, okay, whatever, get you one. So this was when I was like eight or ten years old, so that was uh, at least a few years ago. And so I took that bulb. It amazes me how it's like, it looks like an onion bulb. You know, you think, 
you know, that thing's an onion, that's not a flower. And so you see that onion bug, it looks like, and, and I, she, I said, well, I'm gonna plant it. And so I watched them, how they planted theirs. And so I went over near, we had a tree house, it's gone a long time ago now, but uh, by this big, this small oak tree, and you can, the tree wasn't about that big, now it's about this big. But I took and I planted on the other side of that tree and there was still plenty of sunshine coming to it. And I remember mom and dad both saying, I don't think that thing will live. You plant it too close to that tree, so it'll never live. And I, my thoughts were, if I plant it close to that tree, the tree will protect it. Nothing to dig it up because it's close to the tree, and, I, and it'll be safe. And uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, that flower bloomed out again. And so that tradition, every year I get to see it. I haven't took a picture of it yet. I hope Mom did, but I used to take a picture of it, and I, and I, I show it to people. And I said, this flower is uh, from a bulb that I planted back when I was eight or ten years old uh, and I planted on faith that it was going to grow and really that's what we live off of is faith isn't it I mean we live off faith uh, that Jesus Christ did die for us and that his death meant something and that out of his death becomes resurrection and so just like the bulb is planted I go back and I see the fruits of that every year and guess what every year it has to die again it goes back in the ground and next year we wait to see if it comes forth. You see, Christians, we, uh, we, we forgot to go back and to see that new life every year. We forget to go back every opportunity we have and be reminded of that new life that Jesus gives to us. He said, except a corn of wheat fall on the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it will bring forth much fruit. And my amazement, even from a child, is every year I can go down to our fields. Somebody else is doing the work now, but I can go down to our fields and they'll plant that corn. And every year I'll see that corn come out of the ground and it just amazes me. And I say, what a God that could have a plan that could do such a thing. And he has a plan for us. The same kind of plan for us. He says to us, he says, if you will uh, lose your life for my sake, then I will re-give it to you and it'll be more abundant and more fruitful and, and out of that death becomes life. So we, as God's children, uh, I, as one of my friends said, I'm not signing up to go right now. Amen. I'm not ready to, I've got my ticket, but I'm not ready to go ahead and get on the train. But when it comes my time, when it comes our time to die, we know that it doesn't have to be a time of sadness and, and heartache, even though our flesh misses uh, the life that we live, there is something better that awaits. When we die in Christ, we shall live eternally. Amen? When we die in Christ, we shall live eternally. We have to follow Him. We have to serve Him. Go wherever we can with Him, as far as we can, as we go to the foot of the cross, to go as far as we can and to listen to his voice speak to us and realize that there's something more in this life than just what we see. But beyond this life, there is eternity. Beyond death, there is resurrection. Beyond our faith, there is this hope that we know that that seed has been planted and one day we shall rise again with him and what a great time of living it shall be. He said, if I be lifted up, and today he calls us to lift him up in all that we do. It says no one can come to the Father except by Jesus. Amen, church? No one can come to the Father except by Jesus, not by any other name. And that's going to offend some people, but guess what? I will have to offend them and apologize because, or not apologize, but offend them and say, but Jesus said this, and so I must follow the ways of Christ. And if I follow the ways of Christ, then I know I shall live again. And, you know, I said my, my picture of heaven is being skinny and eating all you want. Amen. But that's not really about heaven. That's about me. But heaven to me is a place uh, where God has prepared for us, uh, where our hearts have never desired, desired such beauty as we shall see. Our eyes have never seen such beauty that is bestowed before us. And it's a place without hurt, heartache, pain, or all the things we suffer. Revelations talks about that. John saw that. He said, you know, I saw a new, a new heaven, a new earth, a new city coming down as a bride adorned for a husband. How beautiful it was. He tried to use some imaginary words that we can't even describe what God is preparing for us. And so, in all the trouble and heartache that we go through this life, why, wouldn't we, why would we not be excited 
about when we do leave this life, what God has prepared for us. And that's what Jesus is saying. If, if you hate your life or if you uh, despise this, this troubled life that we live in, then I've got something better for you. That when you do leave this walk of life, you're going to see the glory of God coming down like you've never seen before. You think that thundering, audible voice was something from God? There's nothing like what God has prepared for us. Uh, I was witnessing someone one time, and they just had a, had a really negative attitude about life. And, and uh, I think they took this scripture literally. I mean, you know, they, they, they wanted to hate their life. I mean, they wanted everybody around them to hate their life, but that's not what he was saying. But I remember uh, after witnessing that person and, and them getting their life uh, right with God, uh, I remember thinking, and they were in a uh, terminal illness, uh, they had uh, cancer, and, and after they died, I thought, I can't imagine what that person saw when they got in glory, and how much they realized what God had prepared for them, and how beautiful the flowers were going to be there, how beautiful uh, all of God's creation. I can't imagine heaven without flowers, can you? I mean, God made those beautiful flowers. I do think there will be no allergies, amen? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the of Bradford pears, but I love their blooms and the red buds and all that. But it takes me on into spring before I get over those. Um, but God is preparing something very special for his children. And he says to come and follow me. Come and follow me and I'll show you life like you've never seen before. And so when, he's, when we say that, we should be dying to live. And what I mean is, is we submit our sins before God and we lay down ourselves before God and we die spiritually and say, Lord, rebuild me, remold me, remake me into your image. And God, may your spirit live in me that I'll no longer be dying in sin, but I'll be living in your redemption. And today, I want you to think about what Jesus did for you and what he does every day. He reminds us that there's something that's more than just dying, but there's something about living. And he calls us to live as God's people. Except that grain falls to the ground and dies, it cannot live again. And when it lives, it brings forth great fruit. Jesus Christ went to the cross and he laid down his life for our sake so that we might live. So I'm dying to live, amen. We're dying every day. We know that. From the time we're born to the time that we leave this life, our body dies a little more each day. And some days it feels like more than others. Uh, but when we finally take that last breath, and this is not a funeral uh, sermon this morning, but when we take that final breath and we stand before God, how glorious it's going to be to know that we chose Jesus Christ. And we chose him as our Lord and our Savior. And because of him, we shall live. Amen. Because of him, we shall live. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you with great thanksgiving. Because we come to the cross of Calvary, we couldn't go on the cross. We couldn't go in the grave. But Lord, because of you, you took our place. And when you took our place, you gave us the opportunity to know what it is to live. Lord, we're just dying to live for you. We're trying to live for you every day. And Lord, if we fail, forgive us. Pick us up and help us get back to the place we need to be, to be your servant. God, if there's anyone here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, that they'll hear your voice speak to their hearts, that they might know that there's more to this life than what we see. There's something very special, Lord, when you went to the cross of Calvary and laid down your life for us. And because you did, we that receive you into our lives shall live also. Now, Lord, we thank you again for your word. May it be in our hearts as we go forth to serve you. In the name of Jesus, and amen. This morning we want to invite you, if you have anything in your heart today, to come and pray. Uh, we're going to be singing number 462. This will be our hymn of commitment, and I pray that you'll commit your life to Christ. Number 462. I invite you to stand, those who are able.